What's up everybody? Well, I got another Asus ROG Ally video for you guys today. And today, I figured I would finally review this thing. So, I figure I'll just do the exact same thing I did with the Steam Deck OLED. That seems to work pretty well, at least I thought. Wasn't a perfect review, but wasn't a horrible one either. And besides, this is just a review from just some guy. I bought these things, I'm just a tech lover, so I've got all sorts of tech, and I just make videos on it. So I figured I'd give my opinion on this guy. And of course, later on, like I said, I was also going to do like a video comparing the two old Steam Deck versus the OLED. And then we'll, of course, do this versus the Steam Deck 2. But of course, I wanted to do its own standalone video first. So I figure we'll just start the same way. Well, almost. I learned my lesson last time. I started with the screen off and it was like going freaking wacky with its focusing. If this thing doesn't have something to focus on, it's just like, nope, makes sense, but I guess I'm still just not that used to these badass cameras yet. I'm used to using a cell phone where all it knows how to do is, hey, you hit the button and it kind of handles everything for you because it assumes you're an idiot. <laughs> and for this kind of stuff, I am. I'm a complete noob when it comes to these kind of cameras, so it's probably just some setting I could turn off and then it would stop doing that, but then it would probably be all to me to focus on stuff and then I'd forget to focus and then that'd be a whole nother bag of worms. Anyway, that's enough for the intro, so we'll start like we did with the Steam Deck with a nice boot test and see how long it takes for it to turn on just by being completely off which I generally don't do with these guys I, I generally just leave them on all the time in fact this guy is generally what I use to upload videos to my YouTube channel I'll just set it down on a little dock I got for it on my bedroom TV have a little wireless mouse you know just all I really need is the mouse for the most part I got a keyboard too but I'll just hook hook it up get the video going put Hulu on another tab and I'm good to go. Just put that on and put King of the Hill on, Family Guy on, something I'm seen a bazillion times that I'm not interested in and go to sleep and have my videos upload while I slumber. But anyway, like I said, let's go do that boot test. All right, here we go with the boot test. It's gonna like freak out for a second, like I said, until it has something to focus on. So click the button, it vibrates. So you know it's on, it comes up with a screen. There we go. Took it a second, but now it's got something to focus on at least, and so now it's gonna stop unfocusing. But I warned you guys that was gonna happen, and boom, now you're already in. And half the time, if you get it right, it'll read your fingerprint right off the bat, and you'll just be signed into Windows. But it doesn't like my finger, but that's kind of my own fault. I use this finger to pack down weed in my bowl when it gets kind of stuck around the edges. So sometimes it's hot and it's gotten all calloused and messed up. So I'm sure my fingerprint's different from how I set it up. So it's sitting here like, what the hell, dude? This isn't right. But anyway, as soon as you boot up, it boots you into this game library stuff. I know you could change this, but this is just standard. I left it alone because I knew I was going to do a review on it. So I haven't changed anything, customized anything on this. It's just pretty much how it came with me installing games on it. All the updates and everything obviously it's up to date on everything drivers and all that good stuff but obviously it does boot up quite a bit faster than the steam deck does but that was kind of expected but now that we've got that out of the way now we can go and just have a quick look around the whole thing and see what's what all right so let's have ourselves a quick look around this ally and the first thing you notice with the handheld is quite obviously the screen so to start off with we got ourselves a seven inch ips screen it is 1080p, 120 hertz, and it is the only handheld that I know of, there could be some that I don't know of, that has variable refresh rate, or free sync to be specific. So that's pretty cool. And it also works all the way down to like 30 something FPS. I think it was 30 on the dot, or it could have even been 25 or 20 or something like that. But I think it was 30, but very nice screen. It's got good viewing angles. I mean, the colors aren't like ultra flawlessly accurate, but they're also not the most inaccurate things that are out there either. It's just kind of an okay screen, but still way better than the original Steam Deck LCD screen, I can tell you that. It absolutely blew me away. In fact, after looking at the old Steam Deck screen and then looking at this thing's screen, this almost looks like an OLED in comparison. That's how much better it looks, at least to me. So after that though, you've got yourself your little thumbsticks, which have a pretty good feel to them. But I think I prefer the Steam Deck's thumbsticks a little bit more, but that's just me. Uh, you also have all of your buttons. This is the button for your command center. So you got all your different modes. You can put your, make your keyboard pop up, show your desktop. You can add stuff to this as well. These are just what I have added to it. You can have your FPS limiter, game profiles, all sorts of stuff. Control your brightness and your sound. And then, of course, you got your start menu button over there, your share button. And then this I actually like. I actually like these buttons more than the Steam Deck buttons. These are like full-size freaking buttons. So that part's actually pretty cool. You got your speaker grills down here. Nice speakers on this thing. They actually are quite a bit better than the Steam Deck. And before this thing came out, I didn't know. I was like, man, it's going to be tough to top that thing, but... 
Asus did it. And then on the bottom, you've got nothing but some specs on the thing. It just tells you it's the RC7L Ally Z1X, which is just Z1X Extreme, and it's the 512. And then you have your serial number and manufacturer date. Apparently this was made in 04 of 2023. So then if we go to the back, Oh, hope that'll drop the dang thing. You've got your ventilation, which they made into a cool Asus logo. And you've got two buttons on the back instead of four, like the Steam Deck. I don't really use them much, but I'm still glad they're there. And at least they gave me two. There's a couple games I set up to have or make use of them, but it's not very common. And then on the top, we've got our power button and fingerprint scanner. You got your power light and your battery light, that'll turn red when you get to 19%. You got your volume rocker, you got your USB-C right there, and then you've got your port. It's a specialized port where it kind of connects both of the thing. Uh, it's a big old chunky motherfucker, but it connects right there, and then you can hook up Asus's proprietary GPUs to it. I do not think you can use just any. I think you have to use theirs. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure in all the videos I watched, that's what they said. It has to be that I think it's called like the XCon GPU or something like that. I can't remember the fancy buzzword name. Then you got your SD card slot, which is in the worst spot ever. Apparently they get killed by that. It killed my, either my slot or my SD card. I haven't bothered putting any other in there to test. Then you got your three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Of course you got your ventilation. This one's got two fans versus the Steam Deck's one, which is good because it's a lot more powerful. It needs that. And then you've got your buttons and these are Hall effect, at least for these triggers anyway. I do not believe these are just buttons, the actual top triggers, but these are actually Hall effect, but these are not. So there are quite a few handhelds that do have like all of them Hall effect, but this thing's pretty cheap compared to those two. So although the Lineage Go has them and that one's pretty damn close in price to this now, so that's a nice bet. That one's also quite a bit chunkier. So if that's your thing and you want a big old handheld, that one's definitely a possibility for quite a few. It definitely looks interesting. But anyway, besides that, I forgot to talk about this on the Ally, but here's your little directional pad or D-pad, whatever you want to call it. And this one's all right. I think I like the Steam Deck's one a little bit more. It just feels more like a conventional controller, like from old to me. This feels kind of just like, hey, we tried to make this cool looking thing. It looks gamery. It's cool. But I don't know. When I play like fighting games and stuff with it, it just kind of feels a little off compared to when I play the same game on the Steam Deck. Though this thing will at least be able to get 60 FPS in said fighting game versus the Steam Deck sometimes struggling in some fighting games like Mortal Kombat 1, for example. But in any case, that's pretty much it for looking around the thing. So why don't we go ahead and move on to the next thing? Okay, so now just for fun, I figured we would compare the thing to uh, another handheld and I don't have any other Windows handhelds yet. So I figured we would just compare it to the Steam Deck OLED. Just for a quick second here. So as you can see, the screen is just a little bit bigger on the Steam Deck because it's a 7.4 versus a 7. And this also has a 16 by 10 versus 16 by 9. So that's why that's 1280 by 800 versus 1920 by 1080. So that's why it looks a little skinnier on the Ally. Now, this is also OLED versus IPS, 90 Hertz versus 120 with variable refresh rate. So they trade blows. There's some things people might like a lot more about the Ally screen, and there's some people that might just care more about the vibrant, awesome OLED screen. But this one is definitely more powerful. This one's definitely feels more like a console, which is kind of a good thing. A lot of people will go, what the hell are you doing calling that a console? Well, it gets closest. It feels like it kind of bridges the gap. If you go into the desktop mode, it can be a full computer. This one has this mode, but this feels like a very, very, you know, probably I'd say the better of all of the people's little menus that they've got, but it still doesn't compare to this thing just being in its big screen mode. But anyway, this isn't about the operating system. This is supposed to be about screens and comparing the two. So you got your, a di quite a different setup for these. There you got your, thumbsticks in a completely different setup than you do on the Steam Deck. They're both just up on the top on the Steam Deck versus being like this and having your buttons up there where the other thumbstick would kind of be, or it'd kind of be more like right here, I guess, looking at them side by side through the viewfinder. So that's just going to be a preference. This, the, where the sticks are for me doesn't really bother me much, but for me, this thing just feels better in my hands than this thing does. But I'm sure there's going to be some people that prefer the way this thing feels in their hands. Neither feel terrible though. I could game for as long as I wanted. Well, <laughs> about an hour on this one, but this one I could game for the two, three hours it can last. But if I had that cord hook plugged into that thing, I could hold that thing up and plug it no, or play it no problem. It wouldn't bother me too much. I don't want to do that though. That's why I do all my tests in just turbo mode, 25 watts on the Ally. Anyway though, buttons, like I said before, I kind of like the Ally's buttons a little bit more than these guys. 
that's just my preference. But the cool thing is, this guy's got track pads. Makes it a lot nicer for certain games and definitely for navigating windows. Now this guy, you can put it in desktop mode and you can control windows, which I will show you later with this thumbstick and then that'll be like your right click and that'll be your left click and whatnot. So that's at least cool, they give you something. And then like I said, I kind of like this D-pad, which I didn't even talk about, but I like this D-pad a lot more than this D-pad. But that's just a personal preference. I'm sure there's some people that like this one more than that one. So just a quick comparison. All right, now if we can get these guys set up so I don't drop the dang things, you can kind of compare how thick they are and whatnot. They're pretty similar, but I think the Ally's a little chonkier, but it's got bigger heat pipes, dual fans, and all that stuff. But I think the Ally is actually a little bit uh, lighter. Not by much, but it's a little lighter, I think, than the Steam Deck still. And as you can see, you got your two fans ventilated, or your two fans on this guy versus the one fan port on this guy. But this new fan on the OLED's pretty quiet. It doesn't really get that loud in most games I've played. And at least Steam Deck people, or Valve, was uh, smart enough to put the SD card on the bottom versus on the top up here where it tends to get fried. I'm interested to see if that MSI Claw also has issues with SD cards, because it's also up there. All right, now we'll show you guys the backs. All right. So, you got your ventilation on the Steam Deck there. This guy's got its ventilation right here. The Steam Deck has four of these guys versus this one having only two, but at least it's got something. I'm sure there's some handhelds that don't have anything on the back at all, you know? And then this thing has Hall Effect triggers. This does not, but honestly, these both feel really nice in games. I don't have a problem doing any racing games with either trigger on either system, so really, I'm okay with either one. They're both pretty awesome. In fact, I'm pretty happy to have both of these, being able to be privileged enough to afford both of these guys effortlessly. It's quite nice, because then I can make cool videos like this for you guys. But that's pretty much it for just comparing them side by side, kind of like I did with the Steam Deck versus the old. I wished I had another Windows handheld to compare it to versus the Steam Deck, but Steam Deck's all I had on hand, so I figured we would just compare them real quick side by side. But Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, let us move along. So now we're just gonna have a quick look at the desktop, just like we did on the Steam Deck. Now for this guy, if you're on the desktop, you can just come over here, plop it into desktop mode, and now you can use the thumbstick at least as a mouse. Not quite as nice as having like a little trackpad to use like the Steam Decks or the Legion Go. I keep almost calling it the Lenovo Go for some reason. I don't know why or how that started, but so you can just use it as a mouse. I'll come over to YouTube. Hey, you. Stop that. And just like the Steam Deck, you can use that one to scroll. So that's pretty cool. Not as nice as having the, as I said, trackpad to scroll, but hey, at least it's something. And then, of course, like I said, the other trigger is your left click. So that's how you can get to your display settings and all that stuff. So it's pretty nice. And this guy is actually pretty powerful. So you could actually completely edit videos on this. In fact, I did once just for fun. Now, obviously, if you do what I do and use 4K 60 FPS high bit rate videos, it's gonna take forever. I did like a five minute video of some game that failed to run on my Steam Deck or the Ally, I can't remember which, and it took the dang thing like 40 minutes to do like a four minute video. So, and that's with it being plugged in full 30 watts and everything. So if you're realistic though, and you're just making some fun little YouTube videos or whatever, it'd probably be more than adequate for something like that. Especially if you put it in a dock and used a real keyboard and mouse, which I did trying to edit a video with this would be absolutely mind numbing. And when I mean mind numbing, it'd probably make me so enraged that I'd probably throw this against a wall. And I don't even get that mad that often, but that's the kind of stuff that ticks me off. And that's why I really wish that Windows would make a operating system just for these handhelds. And then it's up to the handhelds to be like, all right, here's our specs, here's what our thing is. And then they can kind of make like a little custom windows just for it. I know it's a pipe dream. I doubt it'll ever happen. That's way too much R&D for the companies. And that's way too much time and effort for Microsoft. I doubt they really want to do that. But that would make it so much better than, than this. But in any case, that's pretty much all for the desktop. It's basically just a windows shrunk down into a little handheld. It can be both a gift and a curse. Sometimes I like having that and being able to just do whatever and just be like, hey, I want that download. Don't have to do any funny business like on the Steam Deck. But at the same time, sometimes the Steam Deck's just easier to navigate and whatnot on its desktop and do all of its stuff. So it's just going to be completely a preference. And I kind of like both of them. They're both pretty fun as far as I'm concerned. And neither are perfect either. But anyway, that's about it 
for the little Windows desktop. Not much to see, like I said, it's just kind of Windows. Windows is Windows. But now, instead of, you know, like on the Steam Deck, I showed you how long it took to get back to big picture mode. This thing's big picture mode is kind of that Armory Crate software. So instead, why don't we jump over and have a quick look at that? All right, since there's no big picture mode, I figured I would show you guys the Armory Crate software that comes with this thing. It's pretty much the program that meets you and greets you every time you turn the thing on. I'll get, I'm sure there's a way to shut that off and make it stop doing that, but I feel like most people will like that because it's a lot more friendly with the controller. In fact, I don't even think you can mess with the mouse while in this mode. I think if I turn that on, it won't even let me. But here's where all your games will be. Obviously, that's why it's a game land. Whoa, there. Okay, that might get a little old. So let's let's see if what I said is true. If I go to desktop mode, can I use my mouse in here? Nope. Nope, that's back negatory. So let's go back to gamepad mode there. And then I can scroll over and show you the rest of the stuff on this. You got your add. If a game doesn't just automatically get added, you can add it right there. If you don't want a game to show up, obviously delete it. And then you can sort by. So that's it for the game library. Now we've got our settings tab here. So you've got a control mode here. So this is just, you can configure desktop mode and your gamepad mode. Here's your system usage tab. You got your operating mode here. And you can pick from Windows, silent, performance. I just kind of leave it on turbo all the time. A lot of people probably just use manual, but I wanted to keep it apples to apples and just keep, leave it on turbo when I make my videos, you know? Then you've got your system stats right here, which just gives you your CPU stats, your GPU stats, memory and storage, and fan speed, which somehow even figures out your fan acoustics, which is a neat trick. And then after that, you got your eco assist which I just have all that stuff on. Then the very bottom here, you've got your GPU settings. So since this thing actually lets you install AMD settings, you can actually mess with all these anti-lag and stuff. And of course, you can mess with your memory. I always just leave it on auto unless a game gives me an issue. But there's all your different Radeon Chill, Boost, anti-lag, all that good stuff. Then we got your game visual, which we can't, I can't show you, but this is just for the screen itself, so it makes sense. You can have different profiles per game. Like, I want this game to be a little bit more vibrant so I can see people easier. And then this one, I don't want it to look like that because it's going to look weird. Anyway, then you got your lighting tab for all your RGB. That's around your thumbsticks. Quite a few things to pick from. Not a lot, but better than nothing. And then you got your some general settings here. And then here's you go. This is what that thing I was talking about. The XG Mobile. Couldn't remember what the heck that thing was called earlier. But that's the external GPU you can get for this thing. Then you've got your connection, which is going to be your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Give it a second. It'll show all my networks. Then you got your Bluetooth. I don't have any Bluetooth devices doing anything right now. So, Then you got Aura Sync, which is really just more lighting effects. So basically just another part of the RGB section. But a few more options. And then the aura effects are, again, basically the same thing as before. Just RGB effects for the little thumbsticks. Then you got your audio for your microphone and your speaker. But I just have it, I think, the way it came stock. I don't think I messed with any of this stuff. Then you got your speaker modes, too. And, of course, you got your keyboard shortcuts, so you can, like, make a... And Alt-Enter, for example, if a game isn't going full screen, you can make the sh shortcut for it right there. Then you've got your calibration for your left stick, your right trigger and left trigger, and even gyro. So it's pretty cool that this thing's got gyro. I didn't even know it had that. Then you've got all your command center here. You can edit your command center. This is just what I have on it right now, but if you come down to the bottom, you can hit Add, and you can add all the rest of these guys. Not a whole lot of extra ones, but if anybody finds any of those useful, boom, you can put them right there. 
And then the last tab here, we've got a content. So a uh, pretty big amount of this is just ad ads and nonsense, but you've got your game platform. So if you click on that, you can download Game Pass and EA and Ubisoft and all that stuff. Your media gallery, that's just where your screenshots will get saved. I guess I accidentally saved one. Here's where you update your stuff and get system info about your stuff like storage and just all the different other random stuff like Armory Create version. And then you got your guided tutorials. So if you don't know what you're doing, you can just check it out right here about the XG Mobile and all that stuff. You got your fact, your feedback, and all that. And then you got your user center, which is just your Elite Rewards account. I don't use that, but if anyone's interested in it, boom, that's where it'll be. Now, here's where you actually keep stuff up to date. I misspoke earlier. This is where you actually keep stuff up to date. The other thing was just info. And there's also another program that goes along with this that you can use to update some stuff, too. I'll show you that, guys, after this. And then the last tab there is just featured, and that's just a bunch of ads and stuff nobody really is going to care about. So now let's move on to the other app. All right, now here's the other My Asus app that kind of goes along with the Armory Crate app. You can upgrade, update some stuff in here as well that I don't think necessarily come up in the other app. Like I think this is where you get your GPU drivers from. I don't think those pop up in the Armory Crate app. So anytime there's driver updates and you don't want to just use the ones straight from AMD, I think you can just download them straight from them from now, but I figured I'll just let this one use the one straight from Asus. That way I don't get in any issues. So there's your system diagnostics. There's a system update I was talking about. So you can search for stuff. You got your devices there. Some stuff talking about some app deals and whatnot. There's a message center here. What the heck's even in here anyway? I don't remember talking to anybody here. Okay, no, it's just news and nonsense. Customer support again all that stuff, and then just tells you about the general app settings in here, like what it's, I'm sure if we scroll down to the bottom, it probably, or went over to about rather, it would tell us, you know, the app or version and all that nonsense. But that's pretty much it for the My Asus app. So now why don't we go ahead and move along? Well, all right. This is just a quick test of the mic quality of the ASUS Ally, just like I did on the Steam Deck. I'm even using Audacity, the exact same program I used on the Steam Deck to keep things fair. So hopefully this sounds good. The Steam Deck actually surprised me. Obviously, I was right about you wouldn't want to use it probably for a podcast or anything, but it was definitely a lot better than I was expecting. I would have no problem understanding people if they were using it or anything. So hopefully this one will be just as good, if not better. But in any case, now we can go ahead and move on to the speaker test. Well, now that we got done with the mic test, now just like on the Steam Deck, let's test out some Crab Rave. I got the speakers up 100%, just like I did on the Steam Deck. Hopefully they don't get blown or anything like that. As many who are subscribed to my channel, I don't generally like maxing speakers out and whatnot, but they should be able to do it. But the Steam Deck was able to do it without distorting or doing anything. But let's see how these handle it. But I will say this, they definitely are louder and more clear than the Steam Deck. I just don't know about max volume. But let me shut up and let's play and let's see how it does. <laughs> didn't want to stop. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's plenty. As you can plainly hear, it did not distort at all and definitely a lot louder and more has a more, let's see, how should I word this? I'm not exactly a big audiophile, but I think they would say it has a much clearer sound stage. Still doesn't have a lot of bass or anything like that, but what do you expect? Just like I said in the Steam Deck video, even this big ass laptop, 18 inch laptop behind doesn't have, you know, bassy speakers or whatnot. They're tiny, tiny little speakers. But 
Compared to most handhelds, at least the ones I have, those are the best speakers of any handheld I have. But I think there's a couple now that rival or beat this guy at this point. But this guy's been out for some time. That just happened. You wake back up now. But in any case, now, why don't we go ahead and move along? All right, so now for some games. Figured we'd just play the same ones we played on the deck and see how they compare. Although, hold on just a second. Kind of pointless without this now, isn't it? Whoa. All right. Now we've got some game stats. Give me my crystals. They're mine. We got the zombies coming. But yeah, it makes short work of games like this. And all right, I think that's probably enough. So on to the next game. All right, here's the next game. I'm going to lower the world's population. 
Nope, you sure are. I thought you did computers, Liptard. Probably good, so let's move along. Alright, now here's Cyberpunk. Same settings as on the Steam Deck. At only 720p instead of 800p, since this is a 16x9 screen. So we get a pretty constant 60. There are times where it drops under 60 here and there, but we get a 60 and it's sitting in 70 every once in a blue moon. But see, there you go. See, it still drops down to 50s here and there, but. 52, 50. So, it's not a consistent 60, unfortunately. And you could always just lock it to 30 if you wanted it to be flawless, but I just wanted to see what this thing could do. Figured it was a little more powerful. But since this is a VR screen, I would just leave it like this. It doesn't really look that bad. As long as you're not going from like 60 all the way down to 30 or something like that, you shouldn't notice too much stutters. I think I came through this exact area with the Steam Deck. And the OLED screen definitely makes this game pop a little more, but this still looks very good and plays a lot smoother. Because if you want a decent smooth experience on the Steam Deck, you pretty much have to lock it to 30. Or if you turn some settings down, you can get a 40 FPS in there. But you're not getting 60 unless you... I don't think you ever. I mean, this thing can't. So it's just 60 is not happening, I don't think. Not everywhere, but since this is the only one, only kid in town with a free sync screen, it's one of the ones that doesn't seem to matter that much. See, so you still see some stutters though, so the VR screen isn't like the be all end all. I've had quite a few arguments where people are like, no, it eliminates stutter all the way. If you still see stutters, that just means that your computer sucks. It's like, well, I guess my. 7800X 3D PC and my 13900KF PC both suck because they definitely do that sometimes. Anyway though, I think that's plenty for this game. So now let's go hop onto that game that the Steam Deck could not play so well and use the same settings and see what this one can do frame rate wise because we couldn't even get 30 in that game. So let's see if we can with this guy. And then after that, we'll move on to pros and cons, I think. All right, so now we're in the Immortals of Avrium. At the very beginning, same exact settings as on the Steam Deck. And it still has its fair share of stutters, but... For this kind of game, I would just... I'd just lock it to 30 FPS. 
or possibly 40. I don't know if it drops under 40, but just figure out what it never drops below. Like, if it never drops below 40, set it to 40 FPS. If it drops to, like, 38, just go with, just go with, uh, 30, and then you won't see any frame drops anymore. But it just sucks to do that, because at some points you can get 60, but it's not very consistent. Huh, what the hell? Why is the audio so quiet when they're talking? Well, that's definitely kind of strange. Probably just a game issue, though. I don't think it's the Allies' fault. But this is a lot more playable here than it was on the Steam Deck, that's for sure. Can't deny that even a little bit. This is actually running a lot better than the first time I tried this game out, so they must have updated it a lot, and probably got some driver updates for this thing too, that probably also helped. Because if I remember correctly, this was an absolute stutter fest before, like it still has some. And all right, I think that's plenty of gameplay. So definitely does a much better job with these AAA titles than the Steam Deck does. So even if you can only play for like 45 minutes <laughs> to 40 minutes at this particular wattage anyway. But now, why don't we go ahead and go move on to what I like about this thing and what I don't like about this thing. All right, so now I figured I'd go over some of the things I like about this thing and some of the things I don't like about this thing. So for starters, my absolute favorite thing about this is just its absolute power. This thing can absolutely like, just do every single game I've thrown at it pretty much no problem. It gets at least a 30 FPS playable. I can't really think of too many games where it just wouldn't play them. There's a couple though, like that Pandora game, and maybe it runs better now, but when I tried it, it sure didn't run very good. But for the most part, you can play any AAA title on this thing. It might not be maxed out, you know, 120 FPS at 1080p or anything like that, but this thing usually at the same settings as the Steam Deck can do 1080p, at the same kind of frame rates. In fact, usually a little like five to eight FPS more than the Steam Deck can do usually. So I very much like the power of this guy. Now, this is uh, gonna be kind of interesting because it's gonna be both a pro and a con, but I actually like the fact that this runs Windows. You can just download anything, anything you can download on your computer, you can put on this thing and it'll act just like it. But that can also be a curse. So that's also gonna be kind of in the con section. So I'm sure some people are gonna say, what the hell, How, you can't have it both ways. Sure I can, it's my video, I can do what I want. <laughs> But in any case, I like being able to just download stuff easily. Sometimes with Linux, it's fine when you're just staying in the Steam ecosystem, but the second you step out, things can get a little bit more complicated. It's a lot better now that the thing's been out for some time, but it's still not as effortlessly as going on to Google Chrome right there, downloading EXE, install, be done. But there's still some times where games don't run on this, but that's usually just the game being a piece of crap. It's not really usually the Allies' fault. At least not anymore. When it first came out, sure, there was a bunch of times where it would just crash and do some goofy stuff, but that was just 
teething pains. Steam Deck had them too. The next thing I really like about this is the speakers. Speakers are great on this. They are uh, quite a bit louder and just have a better sound stage than the Steam Deck. Now that's not to say the Steam Deck speakers are trash or sound bad. They're definitely still really good, but this is just quite a bit better. And as far as Windows handheld goes, it has some of the best audio. I'm sure there's a couple out there now since this has been out for some time that rival it and even beat it in terms of audio quality. But for the price you pay, it's kind of hard to beat this thing, this thing speakers. Now, the next thing that I really like on this is the screen. Now for me, I kind of like, it's tied for me for between the Steam Deck OLED and this guy. The Steam Deck wins and just visuals, just look, making colors look super poppy and having true blacks because of the OLED panel and having super high brightness with an HDR content with that thousand nits. And even an SDR at 600 nits. I think this is 500 on this guy, but still, this thing wins out from being high resolution, which can be a gift and a curse, but at least you have the option. And then it also is faster, 120 hertz versus 90. And the most important part is it has variable refresh rate, which really helps to smooth some of those games that can stutter a little here and there. It's not going to protect you from every stutter though, as you even saw in that Immortals of Averim game. If it drops too far, it still is perceived as a stutter. You still see it. It's not some be all end all, makes every game smooth as butter no matter what. Some people think that and I just, I just always have to tell them, sorry man, that's just not the way it works, unfortunately. But it's definitely helpful and I'd much rather have it than not have it. So I really like that, the screen on this. It's very good. And that is why I would say between this and the Steam Deck, they're pretty equal as far as I'm concerned. And it completely depends on what you like, of course, as well. Me on such a small little handheld, the 1080p is cool for older games, but in the newer AAA titles, it usually just gets in the way and makes me get like barely 30 FPS to 40 FPS. And you guys know me. I like my 60 FPS as much as humanly possible, but this thing's got the cool ability to just be like, hey, you don't want to play at 1080p, you can do 900p, which is a good medium, which is usually what I end up doing. Or if all you want is FPS, you can go 720p and actually make some pretty good use of that variable fresh rate and 120 hertz. Another thing I like about this Ally is I really like its weight. It's a very light handheld compared to all the rest. Now the new Steam Deck OLED is pretty much, to me, feels on par, but I think this still wins by like 20 grams or something like that. Like you can notice it if you pick them both up and sit there and, and do the, hmm, which one weighs more? You can tell this one's still a little lighter, but still, that's at the point of where it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's not like going all the way up to the, uh, what is that, that Legion Go, where it's like I think almost close to two pounds and that's starting to get a little chunky. I mean, I could still hold that up no problem, but a lot of people aren't gonna wanna be doing that, especially not freaking children. Although I don't know how many people are buying children things like this. If you have a kid, it's probably better to just go, hey, here's a switch or something like that in case they break it or something like that. Completely depends on how well behaved the kid is though, but I definitely like that because no matter how strong you are or whatever, a lighter device is always gonna give you less fatigue and you'll be able to hold it more comfortably or not comfortably necessarily, but you'll be able to hold it up for longer. Comfortability is one of the things I like on the Steam Deck a little bit more than this. This still feels very good in the hand. Definitely not uncomfortable by any means, but I just kind of like the more wrap around ability of the Steam Deck, but I still like the lightness of this guy more. Well, now for some stuff that I don't much care for on this thing. Now, you know how earlier I said I liked the OS? Well, it's both a gift and a curse. You can run anything you want, but Sometimes the thing, the system just doesn't feel and never will feel like the OS was designed around the system since it's just Windows. Now, don't get me wrong, Asus adds cool little tidbits like this and so do all the rest of the guys, but it's just not the same as on the Steam Deck, you know? So that's just one of the things I don't like. But like I said, I do like it because I can just get any app I want and at least have the opportunity to try without fiddling with it and tearing my hair out with Linux. But that still got a lot easier than it was in the past. So the OS is a gift and a curse, as I said. I like some things about it, but I really, really wish that Windows and ASUS and all the rest of them could like get together, give them their specs of their handhelds and just make a Windows that's just, or, or not even maybe that, but just make a Windows just for these handhelds that's more touch orientated or controller orientated, whatever you want, you know, have some options. Cause this is still doable. If you put it on desktop mode, you can use this as a mouse and use these two triggers as a, a right click and a left click, but still, that's not the same as A, having just little doohickeys, little touch pads to uh, maneuver. That would help out a lot, but still, it wouldn't help the whole clunkiness of Windows. So it's a gift and a curse. I like it, but at sometimes I don't like it at the same time. But in any case, on to the next dislike. Now, the next thing I don't really like about this device is with all of that power because and having a small battery to save weight, it unfortunately does not run for very long on battery. Now, a lot of people just leave this plugged into the wall or have a battery bank that they have close on hand to keep it 
charged up and going up to like the maximum 30 watts it can do but i didn't really want to use my handheld like that so for me it gets me like if i leave it at 25 watts play a triple a title i can get like 40 45 minutes of gameplay now if i tone it down to like 15 watts i can get closer to like two hours or not two hours but like an hour and some change two hours is more like a steam deck oled that's why that thing's pretty nice in the battery life department but this is more like an hour and some change maybe like an hour hour 10 minutes and then the problem with 10 watts is unless i'm playing a super low-end game like one of those vampire survivor games or that nwo game then it kind of hinders performance but you can at least get like two three four hours of, of battery life when you do that and they do have a new seven watt mode though but i haven't given that one a shot yet so i can't really comment on how long that one will last but that one will probably only really be good for really, really easy to run pixel art indie titles and like old school emulation, I would imagine. But that one will probably get to give you like, I'd estimate five, six hours of battery life with like decent screen brightness and all that. So anyway, now this is just a personal preference, but I don't really like how this thing feels compared to my Steam Deck. It's the only other handheld I have to really compare it to, but it just feels a little off. Like it's not super uncomfortable, but it just doesn't feel quite right either, so. I really wished that it had like maybe a little bit more domed grips, more Steam Deck-esque, but then they probably couldn't do that because the Steam Deck probably has that on patent and they're probably trying to do their own thing. This thing kind of looks like it's shaped all to be extreme gamery and whatnot. So I would have preferred to have a little bit better grip for my hand. It always feels kind of like it's gonna slide out of my hand if I don't have, keep a really good grip on the bottoms. Whereas the Steam Deck, I can just place that thing in my hands and kind of hold it there free and it doesn't really feel that bad. But very minor thing, but it's just one of those things I didn't like. And with the Steam Deck, I had to really, really dig, dig deep down into the barrel to uh, try to kind some con. I mean, there were a couple good ones, just like this one had like two really big cons, like the battery life and the OS can be a, a pro and a con, but now I'm probably on, even on this guy, we're starting to get into the, you know, oh man, you're really just digging at the bottom of the barrel there, aren't you? All right, another thing I don't much care for is this D-pad. I much prefer the one on the Steam Deck, and it's not, I'm not even saying that that's like the best one in the world or anything. I'm sure there's much better D-pads than that, but... This one always just felt a little off. Like I never feel like I can do the moves right. I mean, it's probably mostly just a skill, skill issue, but I can't really do my moves right in some of those fighting games. Like it'll literally be telling me on the screen what to do. It'll be like, hey, spin around here, hit X. And I'll do that like a bunch of times and it just won't work, it feels like. Whereas on the Steam Deck, I do the same thing and it works. So I don't know. I just, I'm not a big fan of this particular D-pad. Now I'm sure there's some people that actually like this one and think it's awesome and that's cool. If it works for you, great. And they probably, and there's probably other people that think the Steam Deck's D-pad is absolute trash and that's okay too. But I just like prefer that one just a tiny bit more. Oh, and I was pretty much done with my sentence, but it appears to be 420. So I'll go take my hit and then move on to the next con. All right. And the last big con I can really think of that isn't even really gonna be a con for some, but for me it is, but it's mostly just cause I smoke a bunch of weed and get ash all over my fingers. As you can tell, I've got a bunch of it all over right now because I'll poke around and get the green that hasn't been smoked yet and put it into the center so I can hit it and not waste it. But unfortunately, for a white thing like this, it gets kind of scummy and grummy. I don't know how well you can see this through the camera. There we go. But it just kind of looks a little grungy. And if you look around the those guys, you can see it around them a little too. Now the Steam Deck I'm sure has this too, but since it's black, it's harder to notice. And then if we go to the back, I'm sure the back is filthy too. Now I could clean this, I just purposely didn't just to show you guys what it would be like after using it since it came out and never cleaning it off. But a little alcohol and that will come right off and it'll be look good as new. But just a minor issue and that's with all white things. It's not even really an ally problem. It's just a, this thing is white. So it's gonna be a lot harder to keep clean and nice unless you try extra hard or just have your hands not be full of ash like me. And that'll probably help out uh, about 50% right there. <laughs> but in any case, that's pretty much all I can really think of for cons for this guy. Pretty equal pros and cons for both the Steam Deck and this guy, really. I mean, I'm sure I could get really, 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 really just, I guess you'd call it cynical with it and be like, try to come up with things I, I really just don't like about little teeny tiny things like, oh, I don't like these, the setup of these guys or 
where they are versus the Steam Deck or something like that. Or I like this thing's buttons more or something like that. But then that's getting really petty at that point and being like, that's going to be just literal. Hey, I, I just like this more than that. And some people are going to and some people won't. Not really point of the review anyway, at least in my opinion. But that's pretty much all I can think of for cons. So why don't we go ahead and go wrap this video on up? Well, all right, guys, that's pretty much a wrap for this guy. Just figured I would wrap things up real quick before I do my usual peace out guys and stuff and just tell you that I think this is a really good handheld for the money. Like if you are not interested in the Steam Deck, this would definitely be my second choice for now. And besides that, the Legion Go seems to also be very popular if you want something a little bigger with a bigger screen. And that one just does a bunch of cool stuff too, like has the cool disconnecting uh, things. Like uh, almost, I don't know what they'd call, but I'll just call them controllers. I'd almost call them Joy-Cons, but that's just a Nintendo patented thing. But that thing could be cool too, but just for as far as having the variable fresh rate screen and just kind of being a pretty good all run package, minus the battery life, which is a huge elephant in the room for a handheld as far as I'm concerned. Other than having the pretty bad battery life and the Windows things, which are gonna be an issue on every single handheld that uses Windows, since none of Windows is a universal thing. That's why it's a gift and a curse. You can run whatever you want, but it's never gonna feel quite as uh, nice as the Steam Deck since the operating system was made just for that, that one thing. Now they're starting to let that be out on other stuff, so I guess that's not completely true anymore, but it was originally designed just for that Steam Deck. So that's why everything's just built in. You know that frame rate counter is going to work on everything. I've had some time, some videos where I couldn't do a frame rate counter on this guy because it just won't show up because it's just a little GUI menu that Asus added. So it, Windows can just go, nope, sorry. Like, for example, if I went and played Battlefield 2042 on, it was impossible to play. I don't think the Steam Deck would play that game very well. But if I went and played that, I would have been able to get you guys an FPS for that on this guy, on the uh, Steam Deck, but not on this guy because it would have the same issues. Although some people have informed me I could have, done something about that but I've already figured out a solution I'm just going to use the AMD settings little GUI menu thing for the Asus Ally and all those other things that are AMD and then I think even Nvidia has one but that's neither here nor there so this is definitely a still a very good handheld for Windows if you don't want to deal with Steam OS or have and you want to make sure you can play all your games then this is definitely a much better option than the Steam Deck as long as you're okay with you know, not having the best OLED screen in the world because that is definitely the best, one of the best things about the Steam Deck is that screen is just gorgeous. But I still like this screen too. I like that variable fresh rate, that 120 hertz and the ability to have anywhere from 1080p to 720p instead of just be like, hey, here's 800p, that's all you get. I know I could use FSR and tone it down and stuff, but it's not quite the same, you know? But in any case, I don't want to sit here and talk everyone's ear off like I did at the end of the Steam Deck video, but in that one it's been a while since I did any review videos or anything, so I think I was a little rusty. I think since I did that one and then did this one afterwards, I think I was a little bit more prepared for what's what. And that and I kind of just copied the same exact things I did in the Steam Deck video and just, you know, made them more ally-esque instead of Steam. So I think I did a pretty damn good job, at least this time compared to the Steam Deck review anyway. That and I don't think this one's gonna be quite as long. Maybe it will be, we'll see. I think that one's like a 40 something minute review. But anyway, I'm just yakking and on and on. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take me one last little hit and I will say my peace outs and stuff. So, all right. And with that, I'd say that's about a wrap for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, peace out, guys.